Not only that, we are meditating from the word of God, the blessings that God has given. So sometimes some are directly the blessings that God spoke. The Lord blessed them saying some are all hidden with, you know, so many realms. Like, you know, prophetic is one of the blessings from God. So let God speak to us. We got to see how prophets behave. And uh, this season, what we are uh, studying from first Kings and second Kings, all this uh, today, thank God that we are starting from 2 Kings, 1 Kings, we finished it. Thank God we learned so many things from the 1 Kings and how it is important to first seek the counsel of the Lord and not at the last. And today we are also going to meditate the realm of fire. Uh, I think the whole season is about glory, fire, prophetic. All these things is, is a great blessing. So get ready. So how God dealt with um, Old Testament people and how God is dealing with New Testament people, because we being the New Testament ministers, it's entirely different. So before we get into the word of God, we're going to pray and begin. If you're all set, if you're all ready, come on, let's close our eyes and look to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening. We pray that you will speak to us by your word and by your spirit. Holy Spirit, take complete control. Minister unto us, teach us the word as you want us to understand a God. We praise you. We thank you for revelation. We praise you. We bless your holy name as this month is a month of praise. And thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you're already releasing in the year 2022 that you have said in blessing, I'll bless you. And in multiplying, I'll multiply you. We'll receive it with thanksgiving. And I pray for each and every child of God who is connected here on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube. Bless them. Teach them the word in, as the Holy Spirit wants us to learn. Father God, as you want us to learn, God, help us not to be outdated or uh, remain in the um, old systems, but to know the Holy Spirit, know God, as you want us to know in the New Testament, as you tore the curtains from top to bottom, we praise you. We thank you that there is no hindrance to come to you, Father God, in New Testament. Thank you that Jesus, that you tore the curtains when you died on the cross, so that we can have direct access to the throne of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you to the Lord himself. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. We pray that, Lord, that people, those who are connected here, will be blessed with the prophetic. Help us to prosper through the prophetic. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow. So hope you're all ready to receive the word of God. We are learning something special, very, very, very powerful. I think, yeah, we can't go in this speed because um, there's so much to cover from Old Testament to New Testament. There's so much the Lord is doing. And I want to thank the Lord for all the blessings that God is, you know, kind of blessing us with getting to know from Genesis to 1 Kings. So today we are going to meditate from 2 Kings. What did we learn yesterday? Micaiah saw the heavenly system that God had a committee meeting in heaven. And not only that, God was consulting. God was having a talk with the angelic, how to deceive or how to um, you know, bring Ahab down. And what Ahab done was not right in the sight of God. So God had to send a lying spirit in the sense, the demonic uh, force, like, you know, God granted the permission with that he was deceived and he was killed in the battle. So may the Lord protect us from all the lying spirit and lying prophetic and false prophets. Let God give us the right prophetic word and right prophetic counsel. I have seen people, those who, I'm not going to go in detail. Sometimes people can operate in the lying spirit. It has been manifested on people. And sometimes people have prophesied with the demonic forces, like, you know, by God's grace, these are all the Sunday school stories I'm talking about during our Sunday school time. I've seen people who are saying that, you know, we are doing prophetic ministry, but they, when they um, manifested, it was all a demonic forces, not from the right spirit. But, you know, that's how a lot of people can get confused, you know, because of, you know, what they would say in the past may be right, present may be right, but they may confuse the future saying that this is what you'll be doing. But we must be very alert and ask God because Micaiah, you see, Elijah and Micaiah went after God. God's spirit ministered. The Lord revealed them the secret as it is. There was nothing being hidden from their eyes. And God also was, you know, uh, speaking to Elijah in this manner. Did you notice Ahab, how he is humble? Like friends, you know, speak. That's how God and Elijah spoke. And now Elijah is having another level of, you know, kind of friendship that, you know, God's angel would come. You see, God spoke. He heard the voice. But in some cases, angel of the Lord would come down. Angel of the Lord would speak. So I pray that every child of God who's seated here, 
those who are connected here, angel will minister unto you all. Praise God for that. Now, today, let us begin with 2 Kings. Are you all ready? So today we're going to see what is double portion in Old Testament and also what is uh, uh, it comes to the New Testament. So many of the people of God have all it uh, sometimes, you know, kind of, uh, how do I say? Sometimes being in the New Testament, they want to go for the old patterns. Why we are learning this is we are much better. Why we are going for the life lesson is in New Testament, we are much better having the grace of God, the presence of God, God dwelling in us. This is heavy. Come to 2 Kings chapter 1. After Ahab's death, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah had fallen through uh, the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and injured himself. So he sent messengers saying to them, go and consult Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, to see if I will recover from the injury. You see Ahaziah. Now Ahaziah had fallen. You see, this is what is happening. Now come to this word, verse number three. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going off to consult Baal Zebub, the God of Ekron? Can you see people can, you know, when they go away from God, God doesn't like it. God doesn't like it. You see, God wants us to trust him completely. Is this, is there no God? Is it because there is no God? There is no God. Is there because, is it because there is no God in Israel that you're going off to cancer? Can you see this? This is how God came down. He was very zealous. God wanted his people to look to him, consult him, check with him and depend on him, trust in him, follow his decrees, follow his commandments, ask his help. Instead of running after, you know, many other things. That's where, you know, God was very upset with this leader, with this man. Ahaziah, he had fallen even in his fall. You see, mistakenly, maybe he had a fall, he had injured. And because of that, he was, you know, on the bed. Maybe he was there for a longer time. So he wanted to check with, you know, from other forces, other sources. You see that they can also give um, counsel, but they are demonic. But, you know, the source is wrong. Maybe what they're saying might be correct, but the source is wrong. But God is saying, is there no God in Israel? Is it because that there is no God in Israel that you're going and asking for some other forces, which are not even, you cannot even compare them to the God of Israel. Now God is you know, upset and he's saying this to Elijah. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. You will not leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. So Elijah went. When the messengers returned to the king, they, he asked them, why have you come back? A man came to meet us. They replied, and he said to us, go back to the king who sent you and tell him this is what the Lord says. He said, because there is no God in Israel. Now, this is what he's saying, that you will surely, surely, surely die because you are trusting in some other God and you're trusting not, uh, you're not trusting in the God of Israel. You are consulting with some other forces. So surely you will die. So he, he asked, the king is asking, what is the appearance? He said that this is what he had, um, you know, the appearance of uh, a le uh, leather belt and then what garment of hair that's what you know he had so king understood this is not nobody else then the elijah himself the tishpite now the king is saying to him then he sent to elijah a captain with uh, his company now uh, elijah went to be on a hill now he's sending the troop he sent then he sent to elijah captain with his com company of 50 men the com captain went up to elijah oh my goodness who was sitting on the top of a hill and said to him, man of God, the king says, come down. He said, king has asked, man of God, come down. Now what's happening? Elijah answered the captain, if I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then, the, then fire fell from heaven and consumed the captain and his men. That's how dangerous prophetic can be. Prophets can be. You see? Now, king is asking, okay, come, because a, the, the, the prophet has to obey God. And he went to the king and he said, okay, God is sending, God is saying, certainly, you know, just because, you know, you're not consulting God doesn't mean that there is no God at all. You're looking for help from somebody else. Is it because there is no God that you have asked for, you know, for Baal Zebub, this force from Ekron that you are going to consult with them? So he thought king, now prophet would have thought king has sent a captain and the people, you know, an army of 50 to kill him or, you know, that they have come after him because he's not spoken good. He has not spoken a good prophetic word. He said, you will surely die because you have not consulted with God. You're trusting in some other forces. So this is what, you know, 
He would have thought he has sent an army to kill. So the moment he said, the man of God, he said, if I be, be a man of God, if I be a man of God, that's what, you know, prophet is saying, Elijah, that fire come and consume exactly as the man of God said happened. The fire came and killed all of them, 51 people, 50 army, uh, the, 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 the army, and then one captain gone. At this, the king sent to Elijah another captain and his 50 men. The captain said to him, man of God, this is what the king says, come down at once. If I am a man of God, Elijah replied, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. Then the fire of God, fire of God fell from heaven and consumed him and his 50 men. So the king sent a third captain and his 50 men. This third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. You see, wisdom is working. This man, you have to plead for mercy. This man knew how to get the favor. This captain was very, very good. <laughs> this man fell on the knees of um, Elijah. Man of God, he begged, please have respect for my life and the lives of these 50 men, your servants. See, fire has fallen from heaven and consumed the first two captains and all their men, but now have respect for my life, please. Now, this is how, you know, because if he doesn't go, king will king, kill him. The king might put him to death if he disobeys the king. The captain now is in, you know, depending on God or he's falling for the mercy of, you know, the prophet. He's saying, prophet, have mercy. <laughs> and also this, you know, 50 men. And then what, what is happening? The moment he pleaded, you see, God was not very angry. God was not, you know, angel of the Lord was sent. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, go down with him. Go down. Don't be angry now. Do not be afraid of them because Elijah might have thought, okay, because he's a man of God, the other king is, you know, because he has not re received the right uh, prophetic word or a good in uh, prophecy in favor of them. It was against that king. So you would have sent an army to kill. So what is happening? King is saying, okay, <laughs> now let me kill him or something like that. He would have thought like that. So he's bringing the fire from heaven because Elijah is, is used to bring the fire from heaven. Earlier on the Mount Carmel, he, he bought the fire. Again, he prayed, it rained, he prayed, he shut the heaven, no rain. Now he's saying, if I be a man of God, you see that he's not even, you know, kind of, he's saying, I'm, if I'm a man of God, he, he knows his position. He knows his level. He knows who he is. So he had such confidence in God and he said, let fire fall and it killed both the team. Now the third guy is asking for mercy. Now angel himself, angel of the Lord himself had to come and deal. Angel of the Lord had come, you know, the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So Elijah got up and went down with him to the king. And what's happening? He told the king, this is what the Lord says. Is it because there is no God in Israel for you to consult that you have sent messengers to consult Baal Zebub? The God of Ekron, because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. So he died according to the word of the Lord. And that Elijah had spoken. Now, because Ahaziah had no son, Joram succeeded him as king in second year of Jer Joram, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. As for all the other events of Ahaziah's reign, uh, reign and what he did, are they not written in the book of Annals of the kings of Israel? Okay. That's it on the first chapter. Ahaziah is gone. See, the judgment has come on Ahaziah because he didn't consult with God. What is the life lesson? What are we learning? It is important to learn to you know, consult with the God always in prayer. So pray and leave. Sometimes, you know, people may give an hyper prophetic. Sometimes, you know, I've seen even in the spiritual world, people who release a prophetic word also can come against it sometimes if they're not godly they are not in the grace but what is grace is you know people can push people to next level in ministry you know people can be kind of you know even those people kings those who are in that position of power can harm the prophets and here when when the king who has not taken the counsel of the lord seriously and just wanting to take a counsel from other forces from out of israel god is sending a man of god and a prophet elijah to bring judgment on him saying that you will surely die. So what do you learn? You know, prophet is so, so, so powerful that he can bring fire from heaven. And when he releases a word, it is very powerful. When I told you when, when a prophet moves, God moves. That's how seriously it is. So not everyone can become man of God. They can be in ministry, but not man of God. Many of them would want to be, many of the people would want to call themselves as man of God. I'm a man of God. I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. Until and unless heaven recognizes a person as prophet and an apostle and as a man of God, it's, uh, you know, doesn't work, you know, in that way. Because 
Sometimes people can put title. Of course, yes, I love to have titles. But these days, you know, even for recent meetings, people are asking what to put. Some of the pastors, they have, you know, 200 churches, 300 big, big people. Like, you know, church, they have big, big uh, ministry. But when they ask, you know, what to put, evangelist or pastor, I said, just put brother. <laughs> you know, let us be very humble before God so that, you know, we don't want any, um, how do I say, um, David and Saul. Can you see this? Saul uh, fell or also he already had fallen, but Saul wanted to kill David because he got intimidated saying that, oh, okay, he's now, okay, now everybody is singing, saying that he killed 10,000, Saul killed only 1,000. Now what is left? Only my throne, my, my seat, my kingdom. So let me not uh, allow that to happen when I'm alive. So that's what he was trying to, until he was dead, he made sure that King David would not sit on the throne, even though he was anointed as a king. So that's how people sometimes can misbehave even those who know how spiritual things work. So it is always good to be humble and simple before people. Like that's how Jesus lived. But he did extraordinary powerful things. I pray every child of God, those who are here, will also understand this. You see that even their prophet's dressing was very, very simple. No hi-fi dressing, no royal robes. He had camel's hair. Oh my goodness, a leather belt. Simple living. Oh, who was it? They said, this is like okay, a king understood. It's that, that's the man of God. That's the prophet. Okay. Now that's the uh, thing that we get to see. He called fire from heaven. He was called, if I be a man of God, let fire fall. You see, um, Skeva's sons also wanted to cast out demons. They said that in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Now demons, mani those manifested, they were saying, we know Paul, we know also whom the Paul preaches, Jesus. We know but who are you? So the spiritual world understands your capacity, your status, your position, your level. So the ranking in the spiritual realm is very, very important. But what is happening in, in the whole world? Hello, I'm, I'm sorry to say use this. Many of the time, people want to show themselves who they are in the, in, in the natural. Can I tell you something? I pray that, you know, the more you try to capture the place in the heart of God, even in the natural, it will all change. But a lot of people would want to see, okay, how many followers, how many viewers, how many people, these are all their concern. But, you know, if I can tell you, if you can shift your level in having a relationship with God and giving more importance to the word and just rest in his presence, just relax in his presence. And, you know, when, 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 when Daniel was only fasting and praying, he was a man of prayer, man of fasting, man of seeking the Lord's uh, face. Bible very clearly says that he brought counsel to the king. When angels showed up, you know, what did they say? They said, man who, you know, highly esteemed. They said, beloved of the Lord. They said, highly esteemed of the Lord. Can you see how angels are respecting the men of God? Because angels will recognize you when you pray. Angels will know. You see that even this man of God is saying, if I be a man of God, let fire come. <laughs> How rough and raw they were. And, and the fire came and killed 102 people. Two captains and 50, 50, uh, the batch, you know, were gone. You know, the army were gone. The fire came from heaven and killed them. But now this man is pleading for mercy. Now, angel of the Lord had to come down and say, okay, it's okay. Cool down. Do not be afraid. You can go, go with them and tell the world. Can you see how angels will recognize a man of God? Angels will talk to you when you are a prophet. Angels will minister as you minister. Can I, can I, can I, come on. Can I teach this? Can I tell you this? I, I check with, you know, some of the people who move mightily in prophetic. They can tell, I've, I've seen some of the prophets, okay, minister in this manner. They can, you know, just read the names, names and address, and they can see where the houses and, 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 and which street and all those things. Some people, they say, this is a spirit, a witchcraft spirit. This is what witch doctors are doing. You see, those forces also copied from God because... The Satan and his army doesn't have originality. They are the copycats. They copied what God has and what in what in charge what God had given them. They fell and they became negative. Now, can you see there is something real and genuine in the Lord that God has given it to his uh, church, to his people, Israelites. And this is nothing wrong having the blessings, you know, to give details. 
Even when prophet had come this evening, we were talking about this, about, you see, God gave, Jesus spoke to Nathaniel. He said that I saw you when you were under the tree. So he was excited. He believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said that even more greater things you will see. So that first level of faith is very important to some of the prophetic when it comes to some people in Asia, revealing their names, revealing their phone calls, phone numbers, revealing their what has happened in their life. So these are all nothing you know, wrong. So I pray that every child of God who is seated here, yeah. I pray that you will move in prophetic. Understand how prophetic works because whenever there is a need, can you see that when people were going wrong, prophets went and warned them. They said, this is what? They brought judgment on God. You know, the kings who were set up by God, sometimes they, they captured, they became kings because they succeeded by naturally. They pushed themselves and came and became a king. But the judgment of the Lord came. There are only few that, you know, they were handpicked. God allowed some people, God put some people in the position. God allowed some people to conquer. God, you know, allowed, there are some people who God never allowed them to, but they succeeded. They wanted to hold the seat and sit there for, you know, forever. They are not from God. Maybe, you know, the position that, you know, God has removed them in the spiritual world. So angels doesn't respect them. I have once, you know, I saw, not in India, in another country, I was, you know, kind of invited for one special meeting where a man of God was ministering very powerfully, very powerfully. Then I asked him, how do you operate in this such level? Because he said, I'm seeing, um, he saw a man, he said, you know, I see a name. He didn't, you know, he first, he said the name and then he said, uh, this is what, you know, area from, this is from Maharashtra, from this uh, and such and such place. From, I'm seeing a stadium from there, uh, one kilometer, so and so route. And I'm there, I'm there in that meeting. This is what he said. And then he said, this is the name that I'm seeing. And uh, he said that that color t-shirt person who's sitting there. And he was shocked. He said, that's me. That's where I'm living. So where did he get this, this preacher get this, you know, information from? This preacher was from U.S. Details. I'm telling you extreme details. And also deliverance, heavy deliverance. Demons would flee with the command. Of course, yes, God has been doing certain things that, you know, God can give details when it is necessary. So I asked him, I checked with him, how do you like, you know, move in this spiritual, you know, kind of authority and power? Because already we know from little information, what with, with, with little information with our ministries, with also with you know heavy information from the word of God. Most of them, those who are ministering, can I tell you this? Including Jesus, when he was on the earth, he had angels to assist them. Come on, somebody. When they overcame the temptation of Satan, like, you know, Jesus overcame the temptation of Satan by the help of the Holy Spirit and by the help of the word of God. And he said, away from me. And then when Satan left, angels came, came and attended Jesus and they assisted him and helped them. Today, I pray that angels will give you direction. Angels will tell where to go and what to do. Holy Spirit will give that. But with not only that, sometimes with the ministration, see the Holy Spirit gift is there. The Holy Spirit is working in us through us. But there's a, he's too powerful. But there are certain times that you know that angels will be sent, you know, to to work for you. They are the ministering spirits. Are you learning something? So from now onwards, ask God, Lord. I pray that you will send angeling. Even Jesus said, if I ask my Father, He will send to a legions of angels. It means one legion of angel would be somewhere around six thousand members in an in an army troop. Angelic is so so powerful. Today I pray that you know this this. First Kings and Second Kings is all about powerful angelic realm and fire and glory and prophetic. So get ready to also, you know, to experience it and ask God, Lord, open this realm. I'll tell you this, um, you know, we are on social media. I want to share this. This is very sensitive matter, but I'm still sharing it on, you know, with you all. 2010, you know, God told me to pray for. I'm, I'm, I'm touching that, you know, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow, we'll surely get into that area. Horses of fire and chariots of fire. The realm of horses of fire and chariots of fire. Yesterday, you know, kind of, uh, I told you, Dave, yesterday, Naboth's uh, blood, when dogs lick, God also said, dogs will lick your uh, blood also. The dogs will lick your blood also. When dogs lick the blood of Naboth, what happened? There are spiritual dogs which are assigned. Spiritual horses. There are spiritual chariots, angelic beings, horses of fire. Just like, oh, some of you are all wondering, where is it? You will see that in the scripture very soon, tomorrow or day after tomorrow. I'm going to address that because today we'll deal with, you know, certain sensitive matter. This whole week, it's going to be like that. Are you all ready? Come on, ask God, Lord, send angels. Now, angels said, go. They're not going to kill you. Do not be afraid of them. Today, I pray that angel of the Lord will guide your people. 
leave you people. I've even understood some of the people who, who moved very heavily. So I asked this man of God, how do you operate? He said, there are three angels given to me. The Lord told me as I was praying for the ministry, God said, I'm giving you three angels, angel for prophetic, angel for deliverance, angel for healing. So three angels are given to for the ministration. So that's how when the prophetic you know, ministry operates, the angel would give detail. They will write it and show, the, show it to them. That's how it is. So we must test all the spirit. But at the same time, when the angels are at work, they will tell you where to go, what to do. Certain details will be given to you. And that's how you will see success. You know, in 2006, I was in uh, financial debt. So what did I say? I said, Lord, I did small business and then it went on loss. I'm in debt. I can't do ministry with, you know, having all this debt and I, it won't be right. You know, kind of, I don't want to do these things. Like this, in this man, I want to clear all the debt and then get into the ministry. Like, you know, because you've been asking, you've been saying about ministry, ministry. So I want you to help me on this because um, I want to clear the debt. You know, what did God do? He said, tomorrow you'll get a job. And exactly before, you know, this is 24 hour miracle that I've experienced tomorrow by this time. And I got the job in 24 hours time. Come on, I'm telling you, sometimes, you know, God can give you 24 hour miracle. 24 hours. Sometimes it is one week's time. Sometimes it is three weeks. Sometimes it is 21 days. I know, you know, uh, in the Bible, dates, time and all is specified. Let God have his own time because God's timing is the best timing. Somebody say God's timing is the best timing. Somebody shout a good amen. Some of you are all wondering, oh, the time is all gone. Don't worry. The Lord's time is the best time. Wow. All right. So I pray that angel of the Lord, angels will minister to you. God's word will be released to you. Of course, we depend on the word of God and the Holy Spirit. The key importance that, you know, we give on a daily basis is for the Holy Spirit, the word of God, to live the name of Jesus in our lives and also in the ministry that the Father is glorified. Simple as that. The whole thing is, you know, summed up in this manner. But, you know, a lot of people give more importance to signs and wonders, miracles. This all will follow when we follow Christ. Are you all with me? Come on. I pray that. Hallelujah. God's timing is the best timing. So depend upon him rather than, you know, pushing yourself like, you know, kind of, okay, like David wanted um, Bathsheba before the time. God's plan to bring Solomon was through Bathsheba was correct, but he jumped the gun before the time. He, he, he went after her when it is not the time. So don't, 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 uh, you know, mess with God's timing. Just say, Lord, even Jesus said to Mother Mary, right? My time has not had come. He didn't say Mother Mary. He said, woman. <laughs> so understand that. Of course, many will say, he didn't say on the cross, you know, she, this is uh, your mother, John, uh, for to John. He said, this is your mother for, uh, to Mother Mary. He said, this is your son. So that's how, you know, people link it up saying that, okay, this is how God has said that that's our mother and all. Of course, that was for John. But we have father and mother in the Lord himself. Come to this now. That's not our subject, but I'm saying angels will minister. The Holy Spirit will help you. The word of God will guide you because word of God is light. Now, quickly, to, it's going to be eight. Quickly, we're going to, can we cover today this chapter two? This is very important. Very, very important. I'll, I'll touch on double portion of the spirit. Are you all there? Today, one of the subjects is double portion of the spirit. Fire of God, man of God is what, you know, today I wanted to highlight. But now reading to the second chapter two, second Kings chapter two says, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Now, whirlwind is very, very important. Write it down. I pray that, you know, every child of God, we, who, those who are making notes, please make sure that you make, make notes and, uh, and pray about it because angelic is very, 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 very important. Those who are all praying for God to release prophetic angelic. And I pray some of you are attending here. Uh, healing ministry will follow you. Amen to it. Can I hear a good amen? Signs and wonders will follow you because you are giving importance to God's word. God's word is more, 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 more important. Now, what is whirlwind? Now, there is a spiritual whirlwind and anywhere. Okay. Now, people say, uh, in U.S., they have tornadoes, right? Whirlwind, whirlwind. I want you to understand. Anytime, okay, anytime when there is a whirlwind, there is always a double portion. Can I say that again? Today, I pray that God will give you double portion of his blessings. Wow. It means 
Don't limit there. There is unlimited blessings, unlimited anointing, unlimited life, unlimited, limitless. Come on. It's all New Testament is in that manner. But what happened here is any time when God showed up in whirlwind, he left always a double portion of his spirit or double portion of the blessing. So double for all your trouble. Somebody shout a good amen. Double for all your trouble. Now, what is happening with whirlwind? In the whirlwind of heaven, okay? Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. I'll give you wise specification on the places. The spiritual portals are very, very important. Now, come to this place. Now, heaven, you know, he was about to be taken uh, to heaven in a whirlwind. Whirlwind, you know, he was about to be caught up through the whirlwind. Whirlwind, in the whirlwind, what happens is, uh, you see, in the whirlwind, it is always double portion. Job, in the book of Job, we get to see that. Devil came in the form of a wind of destruction. A mighty wind came and destroyed his house and his children were dead. Job's children were dead. When we come to that portion, we'll go in detail. But you get to see there, when God came down to Job to answer his question, God answered. That's what it says in Job chapter 38. When you read verse number chapter 38 and all those uh, things, chapter 38 was one and two, you get to see. Then God came down in a whirlwind and answered. Excuse me. So answer comes in whirlwind. God answers, excuse me, in the whirlwind <clears throat> and God comes down. Sorry. God comes down when in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a, how do I say, God restores in double through whirlwind. You see, Elisha received double portion of the spirit in the whirlwind. Job received double portion of the blessing for all the trouble that, you know, in the whirlwind. I pray that God will release a whirlwind in your house. That stirring up thing happening, right? Anytime there is a stirring up, a lot of disturbances, a lot of, you know, things going around. God would have sent a whirlwind to bring double portion. Some of you be at peace, but you act properly so that God's blessing will not be missed out. All right. Come here to this portion. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Bethel. Now, why Gilgal? Gilgal is a place where the reproach was removed. I, I want to say that again. It's a spiritual place, spiritual portal. Again, Bethel. Bethel is, you know, so they went down to Bethel. Gilgal and then to Bethel. God was telling Elijah, go to these places, portals, okay, spiritual portal. Before he was a caught up to heaven. God told him to do certain things. Now, Elisha is after Elijah. Desperation. How many of you want to get into, see, I mean, gifts are given. Anointing is given as a gift. You don't cry and beg for this and roll out the floor. Hello, hello, hello. When you are sitting in the presence of God, God gives it to you. Like, you know, Jesus chose the apostles and disciples to be with him. And God gave them the authority and power and giftings and all those, you know, benefits and power of God upon their lives. Can I tell you something? The more you are spending time here in prayer, learning the word of God, the more the knowledge about God, when it comes, you're improving in the power of God. Can I hear a good amen? There are many people who can be, you know, learn things on a critical note to criticize others, to hurt others, damage others. I don't think your grace may work, but you know, kind of when you learn the word of God to know God, the power of God will work. I'm telling you, knowing God, when you have the knowledge of God, grace will increase. Power of God will increase. Peace will increase, will multiply, not just increase. It will multiply according to the word. Now, what is happening? Elisha is getting desperate. How many of you want to, you know, kind of um, for deliverance, for healing, for, for, for the anointing, for the power of God, get desperate for the presence of God. You see, God is also looking how desperate are you? Because this person was to be a successor and God said he will be a successor. So uh, automatically this will come upon him. The office will be given to him because Elijah is following Elijah, right? So God is the one who said he will succeed you. But why is he after him? He said, until, 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 yes, until the Lord lives, I will not leave you. As surely as the Lord lives. You see that how desperate he was? Yes, I know Elisha, Elisha replied, but do not, okay, this is what the company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, do you know what? Do you know that the Lord is going to take um, your master from you, from you today? Can you see this? The company of the prophets came. They were, um, you know, school of prophets, company of prophets. They were all making, you know, maybe fun. God is about to take. Don't you know about it? He says, yes, I, uh, uh, yes, I know. Elijah replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah, Elijah said to him, stay here, Elijah. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. Can you see that? Why Jericho? 
I'll talk to you about that. Is it a spiritual portal? Of course, yes. But you know, on the, on on how to say Jericho is um, Jericho, Jerusalem, city of Jerusalem means city of peace. Uh, Jericho means a cursed city, city of curse. So so God sent him. So there. I will tell you why uh, Jericho, why Bethel, why Gilgal and all later. But this is more important today. We're going to go for a double portion of the spirit. Now, this one quickly and then we will pray. Now, this one is very, very important. Uh, the company of the prophets of Jericho went up to Elisha. So there were also a group of uh, prophets there and asked, you know, Elisha, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know. He replied, but do not speak of it. And Elisha, Elijah said to him, stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. Jordan. Why Jordan? Again, it's death. River Jordan is a river of death. Now, God is sending there for a reason. So, God is sending me there. Now, God is also checking on Elisha how desperate is. Is he able to follow everywhere? Because Elijah would obey God as it is, like, you know, kind of he would not want to disobey the Lord at all. So Elijah would go there, here, go here, and there, because he's hearing the voice of the Lord. Elisha also is saying, I'm going to follow you because, you know, this is the only life that now I have. I burnt, you know, the yoke. I've, I've also killed the oxen. There is no turning back. And I'm going to go after you for a reason. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 50 men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance. Now, Okay, now this is what uh, Jordan, as he replied, as surely as the uh, Lord leaves, uh, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. 50 men of the company of the prophets went and stood at the distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stood, uh, stopped at the Jordan. Now, what's happening? Elijah, I'm reading word after word so that you'll understand. Elijah took his clock, rolled it up, and he stuck the water with it. The water divided it to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on, a, on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. Double portion of your spirit. Now, this is Old Testament. A uh, prophet is asking the senior prophet for double portion of the spirit because ministry is all about in the spirit realm. What happens in the spirit will manifest in the natural. But what is happening here? Let me narrate a double portion of your spirit. Somebody get ready. Sometimes God can send. You, you see, many of them, I, I'll, I'll be very, very open. Maybe many may not like this uh, statement, but doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me because I want children of God, body of Christ to understand this. That in New Testament, there are many greater things. But in the system of God, in the Old Testament and New Testament, you know, God sent people like, you know, Jesus himself being the God, the son of God, laid hands on people to, you know, to bless them, to heal them, to release the power of God. Those who touched Jesus for healing, they were healed. You see, Jesus touched to even the race, uh, touched, not that they just dead body, touched even that coffin, right? The, the thing that they were carrying, the dead body. The dead people got up. Jesus commanded, you know, he spoke and then he said, Lazarus, come out. That's it, because Lazarus maybe would have had more faith because of working with him closely. Some places Jesus spoke, some places Jesus touched, some places Jesus did an action. So that, you know, action in a sense, like, you know, he took the oil, he took, not the oil, he took the soil and he anointed the ear, eyes and all. So people received healing. So there are different style of healing, you know, kind of Jesus did that. But here you see that, you know, Touching is very important. Speaking is very important. Everything is very important. God would send anointed people, apostles, to speak over your life. That's the system of God. You see, sometimes God uses pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists to release a word of God over their life. This is what the Lord is going to do. Sometimes God can send people. In many places, in many cases, I've seen, you know, in, in our experiences, God would send us to some houses or regular house visit long back when we, we had in charge of cell group meetings and all. Houses were blessed, delivered, demons would manifest, they would leave, people would get healed. That's how, you know, God um, established the ministry and his work. Today, I pray that every child of God understand this. Any man of God coming, you know, to you should impart grace and blessings over your life, not trouble. Can I say that? Amen. Sometimes, you know, people would think that, okay, when a man of God, when any man of God shows up, they will always have something to impart. Just like, you know, uh, this is how the system works. Peter and John, they said, silver, gold, none we have, but what we have, we give. 
So a man of God can give healing, deliverance, anointing, double portion of the spirit. So they had, but coming to gospel of John, this is very important. And then we're going to pray now. You want to read it? All right. Maybe we'll turn to John, gospel of John. This, I didn't plan it up, but uh, I want to read it out for you so that people will understand because they, they, we are not just blabbering here because every word is very, very important. God is word. Scriptures cannot be broken. So you need to know how system works. Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse number 3, verse number uh, 34. Can you all read this? And then we're going to pray. It's, going to, it's already 8 o'clock now. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. Whoever goes, you know, word is sent by God, they will not lie around. They will not speak lies. Come on. What they have is only to speak the words of God. Any man of God, any preacher, any person who's sent by God, they'll only speak the words of God. This is how it is. We have nothing else. You know, I think, you know, long back we had, uh, we had this time of, um, how do I say, um, time to share many jokes because when we were in the college and with people and with friends, when, you know, being before being born again, people had this talents to be shown, like, you know, they can sing good songs, movie songs to others, right? That's what we did before our salvation and all. Even after getting saved, uh, until we realize this and all is not the right thing, you know, singing to people the secular songs, which is not even bringing any grace, anything to impart the power of God. Now, all this talent show, show, you know, talent show of, you know, what they had, dumb sharaj or, you know, kind of what, what else they can do, mono act and mimic, mimicking others and all. It's all to make fun, to make people happy. But there is no permanent solution or complete deliverances in all these things. Can I say that again? People may smile and laugh and go. But the permanent solution comes with those people who have the spirit of God. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Can I hear a good amen? Come on. How many of you are learning? This is very, very important. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So you must understand the Holy Spirit and bondage cannot go hand in hand. It was for freedom that Christ has set you free. Christ means the anointed one. The anointing will always set people free in Jesus' mighty name. Come to this. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. So I pray that, you know, God's word will be ministered to you. And then what happens? For God gives the spirit without limit. This is an Ivy version. Sister Rachel or somebody, you know, who are, you know, posting all the scriptures. Shavita, sister, anybody, could you kindly please uh, put it on KJV, NKJV or any other, you know, um, versions. Uh, this is an Ivy. For God gives the spirit without, without limit. Old Testament, double portion of the spirit. New Testament, without, lim without uh, limit. He gives the spirit without limit. Now, what is much better? Double portion or without limit? So what do you want to have from? Men of God also can give double portion. This is true. Prophets can give double portion. Many people can give double portion. But when God gives his spirit, he gives it without limit. Somebody say amen. So you want to receive from God? Get ready. You have it. Amen. Thank you, sister, for posting it. Sister Beulah. All right. Now, this is what the word of God is. This is the word of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. For he, who, for he whom God hath sent Speak it the words of God. Now, how many of you, you see that, you know, there are many things that we can share here, even on, on here. And our, our views can go very high, very fast. If you put jokes, if you put, you know, kind of nice presentation, all this is fine. But what I'm saying is on a daily basis, this is a raw word of God, raw ministration of the Holy Spirit. Simple as that. I pray that you'll understand. And you'll also learn about fivefold ministry, being the minister of the New Testament. Uh, gospel, you know, New Testament ministers are different. We are the ministers of the New Testament. So entirely different. And then com coming to this, okay, again, we're going to read Amplified. Thank you, Sister Rachel, for that. For since he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, wow, proclaims God's own message. God does not give him his spirit sparingly or by measure, but boundless is the gift God makes of his spirit. Now you tell me, some of the people, you know, they say, okay, receive the double portion. They, it is also correct. Because it is in the scripture, but their knowledge is only so much. So they cannot have more than that. 
As I want to say, last night also, Jenny was saying about, you know, not la not la last night, Jenny was it the last night or I don't know, one of these days, recent time, very recently, she was saying about one of the preachers that, you know, they were preaching. They said this, they said, saying that, you know, double portion and uh, what God wanted, you know, to do with um, Joshua, let God do that with you also. Everybody is unique in the Bible. This and all is given so that a faith is boosted. A faith is lifted up. But a trust and uh, level is not to the of their level. What God had to do with them, God has done. But what God has to do with you, through you, he will do that. Are you all understanding? So now, how many of you want see, of course, I love all the men of God who have sacrificially given their life. You know, they, they have given their best. Like, you know, kind of, they could have been in the secular world, movies. They have given everything and they have lived only for God. And they live for God alone. Thank God for that. They are good heart that God has given. But without the knowledge and of the word of God and knowledge of God, not that I, I know everything and all. No, no, no. I'm also learning. But, you know, when I used to read, when I read the whole Bible once when I was in the school days, I used to wonder, I even asked some of the people, why people are all preaching about more about Moses, more about Abraham, more about uh, uh, who else, Elijah, Elisha, more than Christ. If you observe in the Bible, the Christ and the Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, even recently, I was wanting to thank God. There was a man of God that we met in North Karnataka recently that, you know, last month we were there. He was saying about whenever Paul addressed, he always said about the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Only he would address the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit when, we, when he used to write it there. Are you all there? Are you learning something? He never said only Jesus. He never said only Jehovah the Father. He never only said the Holy Spirit. He said about the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord comes with Jehovah. Jesus is the Son of God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So he would put it in his letter in that manner. The Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is the Lord. Jesus also is the Holy Spirit. So he combined everything together. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they may be, you know, kind of in different, uh, what do you say, uh, like, you know, personalities. They have different uh, administration, nature, but you know, they, are, they agree with one. They are one. Oh my goodness. Okay. Because to come to us in a diluted format, or else, you know, nobody can see the Father God, Jehovah in the Old Testament, and would, they would leave because they, they don't keep up their holiness, their standard of God, God's standard, they would die. But in New Testament, thank God that, you know, the whole fullness of God, fullness of Godhead, dwells in Christ Jesus and that Christ and Jesus dwells in us. Now you tell me how much Holy Spirit do you have? Double portion or limitless? You're not talking. Okay, this was very difficult. But tomorrow I'll continue with this. Elijah is saying that, you know, um, Elijah is saying, yeah, let me narrate a uh, double portion of your spirit. Of course, one of the men of God, I think, you know, Pastor Chris was saying when I was in uh, Nigeria, because I wrote a book on the anointing as the Holy Spirit told me to write a book. So we have covered like when the initial first two chapters, three chapters would be about my experience, little bit of experiences of what, you know, because you see, even Paul, when he was very young in the Lord, he spoke about, I was chosen on the way to the Damascus. He was saying that I was chosen uh, when I was in the mother's womb, even before I was formed in the mother's womb, when he had the more knowledge of God, he says that not in the way of Damascus or in the, before I was formed in the mother's womb, I was chosen even before the foundation was laid to the earth. That's how the knowledge developed. God chose me even that before the foundation was laid. That's the level, you know, as he progressed in the Lord, he understood. How many of you are understanding? I want you to progress in the knowledge of God. Come on, somebody talk to me. Is it helping you? I want you to understand this as the Bible says. Now, Elisha is asking for double portion. Now they say, um, you know, when, when, when Pastor Chris read the book, uh, Why 19, 2, 3, you know, uh, chapters maybe or pages, you would have understood only that, you know, he would have, he came and said that there is no double portion of the anointing. I said, you know, in the anointing, then we had, we had that, you know, God opened up that realm so that, you know, we could have a conversation. So we spoke about, you know, I said, man of God, this is um, one of the area on, on God took, you know, in the Old Testament and New Testament and anointing. I did not explain it to him because there was kind of a uh, healthy argument that we were having in the pastor's meeting, minister's meeting, huge. So I was, you know, given a chance to talk. And I, I told this because he told, he read the book and um, because he's specified, he spoke about a Mimshak anointing. We will also learn from that. But he was saying about, uh, this is, you know, there is no double portion of the anointing. I said, 
there is but you know we are not there when you read the whole book then he said he promised he will read the whole book then you would have understood then he asked us to pray and all minister with them but one of the area that when we begin we said about the double portion stays like you know kind of we you wear you wear a good cloth when it is very cold and when it is raining you wear a jacket a double portion you see that elijah was uh, depressed when uh, jezebel spoke we don't get to see elijah getting depressed or you know kind of uh, running for his life or anything he was very stable very strong in the lord today i pray that every child of god you will understand that you know he also said pastor chris said before he heals a lot of people i've seen uh, you know quite a many a times that in the healing school i was there by myself in south africa in nigeria and other places he would lay hand or he would speak and every time you know in the ministers meeting you would say like a jacket the anointing would come upon him before he enters the arena before he enters the healing room before he enters to heal the people and like a jacket it would come upon the spirit of god will come upon him like a jacket you see that the holy spirit is dwelling on us sometimes the holy spirit will come upon us with power are you all there i even have heard about how many of you heard about oral roberts quickly as yes, we're going to pray because we are learning something on the ministration part oral roberts you 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 just google it up you'll get to see oral robert junior city more but if you go on youtube you'll get to see old healing crusades where you would heal people lay hands on people sick people lame people those who were on the wheelchairs and many would get healed very powerful man of god before he would go for any crusade or healing meetings like you know his left hand or right hand would shiver with the power of god one day he was waiting before the meeting the crusade you know is organized people are all singing but he is still in the room praying and then um, he is not feeling anything the uh, the preachers are all the organizers are calling come in its time the, they are all singing the song now he is not feeling that power of god a presence of god like you know his hands would shiver with power of god whenever the power of god would come then you would know that many are getting healed in the meeting then what is happening <laughs> the, 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 the 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 that shivering was not happening in the hands So he waited. He said, "Okay, Lord." He told, "Lord, I'm not going to go on the stage without feeling you, without understanding that you are coming there." So God told, "I didn't give that experience. That experience because I was wanting to check that you know, will you go to that meeting without me, or you want me and my the, my power to come along?" He said, "I will not go without you because only when you come, something will happen." Wow, that's how our trust should be. Today, I pray that you know, healings will become very common. power of god will be very available to heal the sick to cast out demons for the supernatural are you all with me come on somebody today i pray that you will have limitless yes spirit of god limitless you see he asked for a double portion but in new testament without limit shout a good amen say lord i want your holy spirit without limit we'll come to that when we come to the new testament but i'm just you know giving you reference but you know sometimes when we preach right with the knowledge people also can pray a wrong prayer saying that lord give me double portion give me double portion can i tell you change your prayer say that lord i want your spirit without limit all of it and god can give it to you because the fullness of god dwells in christ and the christ dwells in us so what do you have fullness of god some of them they don't understand this this is a mystery somebody said thank god that god chose me to dwell in me wow he is with us he is in you he can come above you upon you he can cover you he can envelop you he can wrap you he can dwell inside of you this is god eh? and when you allow your body your spirit your soul to god to you know for you to completely soak in his presence and be completely covered in his presence your life is different somebody say thank god for the limitless life limitless spirit um god that god has given his spirit without measure in new testament just thank him just praise him it will start working it will start manifesting excuse me when i got this message right you don't know what kind of you know warfare i had to face lot of you know kind of accidents that i missed when i was learning on this area because i was so much interested because in new testament jesus was healing that was for all the natural body healing you know lives uh, touching people blessing people raising the dead feeding them compassion ministry all this is good but jesus was teaching his disciples about the spirit world about you know to some lay, some people he spoke about the spirit he taught about how it operates how it works because god is spirit this is what jesus was teaching so i was more concerned about the teaching that jesus was giving are you all ready how many of you are ready by the time that we are finishing the the whole study god willing before the lord comes i'm telling you you'll operate in the spirit realm 
that wherever you go, whatever you do, you'll bring the power of God to people. You'll bring the aroma, the grace of God, the anointing of God, the presence of God, the spirit of God will operate through you. It will be very easy for you to move in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Are you all ready? So fire of God will be so much. The power anointing, the spirit of God will be so much that you will have limitless life. That's what, you know, when it comes to Zoe life, you must understand what it is. Somebody thank the Lord. Say, Lord, thank you for giving me your spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit. They are life. So he has given us his spirit, his word. He has spoken his word. His word is life. His word is spirit. Limitless. So it is more important to soak in the word so that you'll understand the spirit word. I'm stopping it here. So what is Peter and John? They are saying, Peter is saying, silver, gold, none we have. What we have, we give. They said in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So what you have is very important. How many of you are all ready to have, you know, the limitless? Hallelujah. We are going to pray. We are going to ask God, Lord, give me limitless. Hallelujah. Even I used to cry and pray, Lord, I want what this man of God has. Even once, you know, Pastor Benny Hinn was here in uh, Bangalore when he was in his peak. Huh? Very, very, you know, peak. He had the, one of the best record holding crowd in Bangalore, not even in Mumbai. So I, we, me and my brother, we joined the choir just to get impartation, just to get prayed. They told us that, you know, Pastor Benny will be um, visiting the choir practice when they're practicing in choir before the crusade. He will come and pray for the choir especially. He said that. So that was a thousand plus member choir. It was a first world record of, of that time. We were in the choir just that, you know, I thought even when Benny is going to walk, I'm going to jump and touch his cloak, just like the lady who touched the hem of the garment of Jesus to get healed. I thought I will go for the anointing and catch it. By then, the media cast Benny Hinn and Benny Hinn couldn't come that night. The, they stoned the choir members. The choir members were bleeding and coming to the crusade. That's how the challenges were. But a lot of healings happened. A lot of healing. But he prayed uh, for the double portion. He prayed for the anointing to come upon the people. Of course, I saw the wave of God hitting people. It also touched the choir. I said, okay, I'm not satisfied. But, but you know, I read the Bible. I knew what it was. But still, because emotionally, when we are stirred up, saying that you know, a lot of hype was given. Thank God for those men of God, the man of God who did such heavy, heavy, heavy ministry. Praise God for that. But I was wondering. I was literally, literally wondering. You know, I was so much emotionally stirred up, saying that God, I, I'm going to touch him. I'm going to catch him. Only in this manner that I will be able to get the double portion of your heavy anointing. So I started behaving, combing. I started, you know, stitching my suit, my clothes. In, in you know, how Benin would stitch. So I didn't become Benin overnight, <laughs> thank God. But, you know, kind of, I thank God for that man of God. But I love that what they carried. But, you know, when you come to New Testament, it is something else. Are you all ready to receive the limitless life that God has for you? Somebody thank the Lord. Thank God for all those ministries. Huh? At least, I think, and I, I don't think anybody else would have spoken about the Holy Spirit and anointing to the world like what Benin has spoken of our, our time, nobody else, because he had such reach with media and people and influence. God had blessed him in that manner. We pray that, you know, God will give us more grace to teach and reach our people as much as possible about the word of God, about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, so that their lives will be transformed. So having the knowledge of God and the word of God can bless you a lot. Shall we all pray? Come on, I'm excited. So are you going to go for a double portion of the spirit? are limitless. Shall we pray for the limitless life that God has given us? We are going to pray for on a daily basis for the fire of God to increase. Are you all ready? On a daily basis, the whole month, we are going to praise. We're going to see the fire. Fire everywhere, in our houses, in our families, in everything. Can I tell you something? One of the signs that we had a fire camp, okay? Fire, fire camp in the sense, uh, yes, fire, fire camp. Uh, the topic was fire anointing. And in, in recently in Tamil Nadu, one of the places in Madurai, the, one of the coordinators and spiritual people, they said, we want to see the young people, all the youth to be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yes, fine. One of the signs, they said after the meeting, they said they wanted to have meetings in three, four places, fire camps for the fire of God to spread. They were saying this, huh? they were saying this, that sign that fire has, you know, kind of come to every place is they want to have the same pattern because fire will always spread. I pray that, you know, wherever you go, you spread the fire of God. Wow. Are you all there? Whatever you touch will be full of fire. 
That's why your kerchief can carry fire. <laughs> your clothes can carry fire. Somebody, come on, talk to me. Your words can become fire. So you want now double portion or you want the limitless? Come on, talk to me, those who are here on Zoom. I'm telling you, this is going to leave you with a challenge. You will not be, let God forbid that we pray an emotional prayer and, 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 and get stuck. I have given you an example. When God wants to give you a high end, like Rolls Royce, when God wants to give you something like, you know, like uh, Maserati, um, for example, I'm saying, uh, for example, and you are still praying for Maruti eternity, you're praying for small, small, smallest cars. Don't, you know, limit yourself. That's why it is important to pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues, pray along uh, according to the will of God. Wow. Are you learning something? Of course, we can, you know, pray for deliverance, healing. That will happen. If you put that meeting, people will join. Prophetic is, of course, people will join. I want a, a team of people who will know the word of God, who will know God, who will have the knowledge and also experience of God. That, you know, they will be a great blessing. Some of the sisters who say that, ah, my age is up, you know, I'm just limited. I'm at, no, 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 no. With, with all these things, you will see by the time the session, the seasons are, this season of learning the word of God, when it is over in your life, you will be demonstrating the power of God. You'll be bringing healing and deliverance in the lives of people. Are you all with me? And I'm not going to say, okay, please come and sit and, you know, we love to have, but I want you to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Not our disciples. I want you to become disciples of Jesus Christ, having the word knowledge, knowing Christ himself. Shall we pray? It's already 821. I pray that, you know, God will raise you to minister to many because the coming of the Lord is very near. Are you all with me? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So I encourage every one of you to look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Our message is very simple. And very powerful. Look to Jesus and run after Jesus. Simple as that. And learn the word of God. So when you do that, the spirit of God, the same Holy Spirit who dwelled in the ministers of the gospel from all the New Testament, when they visited also in New Testament, who's dwelling, is the same Holy Spirit dwelling in you also. Are you learning something? If you are only praying for a Lord, double portion, you have asked for very little. He gives his spirit without limit. Say thank you, Lord, for the limitless life, for the limitless word, word without limit. Wow. Shall we pray? Those who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube, God bless you. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Hope this has blessed you. Pray the right kind of prayer so that your ministry will be a great blessing to many, many, many. See, why I'm saying all this is anybody can preach. Anybody can sing. Those who are talented, they can all do this. But the ones who bring fire, the, but the ones who bring impact, but the ones who bring healing and deliverance are those who want to soak in the word and the Holy Spirit. I request and I request, humbly request every child of God. And a lot of people, they can, you know, tell stories of what has happened there, what has happened here. I pray that, you know, God will raise you in such a way that you'll be a history maker. When you, may, when you go to any place that you will become the news of that town, news of that city, news. Can I hear a good amen? That you will become the news of that place because of God's glory and power in your life. Somebody say that, you know, they have become a headache and nuisance. That's what they say, right? <laughs> but you'll be a blessing. Somebody say, I'm a blessing. Whether devil does likes it or not likes it, he does, if he hates it, doesn't matter. When people like it or doesn't like it, because God has spoken that we are a blessing. We are a blessing and he has given a spirit without limit. Say that loud and clear. I'm a blessing. Keep saying that. I'm a blessing. I am a blessing because God has blessed me and the blesser dwells in me. And blessing, he'll bless us with multiplying. He'll multiply. That's what he said to Abraham. But in Christ Jesus in New Testament, it is yes and amen. It, is, it means it is already done. So say that in blessing, God has already blessed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for that. So limitless without measure is what we are supposed to be asking. So what is the spirit? Spirit is life. Spirit is word. What is word? Word is spirit, spirit and life. So that's what Jesus is saying. He's trying to do it. My words are spirit and they are life. So when you have the word, you have more word, uh, spirit. You have more life. So learn the word so that you'll be full of God's word. Now, many people without the Holy Spirit, when they read, right, they can cause a lot of disaster and damage to the lives of people. Now, I want to stop it here and pray for today. 
tomorrow yes we'll again continue with the with with the realm of fire and prophetic are you all there so prophetic always goes with fire and glory all right and also with authority love you all thanks for joining this evening god bless you with his word see you tomorrow shalom 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 we're going to pray on zoom for some time for the blessing